Welcome back, kids. It's Birds of Feather, co-ed edition. It's your girl, AJ, the Suburban Princess, here with my buddy, Eddie B. What's up, homie? We're back. We're back. It's been, uh, feels like it's been a long time. It's only been, a, what, a few weeks? <laughs> well, Maybe. you know, since the Super Bowl, it does feel like it's been months, because once you kind of... Yeah. Feel that aggravation although we're not talking about that we're turning the page because literally according to the nfl calendar it is the new season so is it is the new season free agency has started which is my lucky number number three so we're starting season three of birds of a feather a lot of hopefully new things i'll be playing around with this pod um as the season um off seasons technically into mm-hmm. the training and stuff starts to play around and develop so eddie yeah. so today we know that now that it's officially march 15th um and it has just begun. The rumors, the, uh, the shakeups, the, uh, the Ides of March, the Ides of March, <laughs> March Madness as well. Although I'm not really paying attention to college basketball, but I know that Penn State's in the final. I was I was gonna do a bracket for my job, but I'll say yeah, I haven't done it yet. I, I think it's too late. Too late. I think it's I think it's too late, and I don't really feel it like putting it doing it. Yeah. So I was shocked that I even decided to even bet on the Sixers tonight versus the Cavs. I don't know why all of a sudden I felt the need to do it like a two two parlay or whatever they call it. So we'll see uh, what happens. I'm gonna just try my luck. Did you parlay for uh, B to score thirty points? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, see, I'm trying to be realistic when I do my parlays. I I was saying either twenty twenty points or higher because I figured mm-hmm. thirty would just be too like assuming that. I mean, because you have to assume every time they're going to a road game, even though they have a very good road record. Um, you have to consider it's a couple days since the last win. Um, usually they take a while to warm up. Um, yeah. I bet uh, 7.5 on the spread. I always stay safe and do $5 because I always just do three sets of five. You know, figure it'd be a nice little total at the end if I get my under 222.5 points for the game tonight. So I'm, I think that sounds about right. Oh, okay. Sounds yeah, right. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do any betting, so I don't think I will, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, bet GM. It's not like I'm getting paid for it. But anyway, I'm just saying I'm trying to get into the betting zone now since mm-hmm. football is over. And I normally would do bets with uh, FanDuel. But anyway, so how the hell are you, Ed? How are you feeling about the most recent movement going on with our birds? We also uh, know we're going to list all the moves, but I just want to see what you feel overall. Uh, I think, I mean, Monday was, uh, well, Tuesday was a little lackluster because, you know, yeah, not much really- happened. It's until the end of the day, you know, it was like, oh shit. And then all this stuff started happening. Yeah. I mean, I you and me are I'm okay. I, I, I'm okay with what they did so far. I mean, you got to realize that it's, it had at least, what, 15, 14 to 15 free agents, and that's very tough on a team. Especially coming off Super Bowl year. Yeah. We know we knew that not everybody was going to stay, right? I mean, we both agree yeah. that nothing is shocking as to, who probably has to go, who probably still has yet to be signed or or extended. The biggest news, obviously, is Kelsey um, coming back, which we kind of thought was going to happen. Um, he yeah, signed we got for two, of our, two of our captains back. You know, we got Graham and we got Kelsey. Yeah. Duh. Yeah, thank you. Brandon Graham um, signed and J- Jason Kelsey came back. Lil Bootsy, Boston Scott came back for a year with like a mm-hmm. of money. But, you know, we've been giving him of money for, for years now, and he still comes back. So he knows yeah, he, he knows he's a giant killer, so he works well for us. Yeah, he knows he he's uh he's going to be useful here. He knows that, you know. Yeah. If you have a role, why wouldn't you come back? It'd be different if you didn't feel like you had a place. And he likes and he, he likes it here. I mean, he has to at this point. <laughs> if he didn't, he'd be like, he's been here so how many years now? Don't get me to line. All I know oh, is God. that... Every year he comes in handy, and that's why I say like people always shit on him like he's not useful. And I'm like, yeah, but every time the Giants come toward the end of the season, he's very helpful. Trust me. Well, he's a very good change. He's a good change of pace to have. Yeah, and I and mean, there's he's... nothing wrong with it. Um, I you know the biggest shock to some people, but not me. Once again, is that Miles Sanders was uh, free to go. So which I we both talked about before the season. Well, I knew I knew he's going to get paid. Hopefully, my hopefully you know the Dolphins pay him. Yeah. Because I, I, I want, I would like, I would like to see him make some money. He deserves yeah. it. He deserves it. Yeah, and I thought, and I tweeted at him. I just said, just stay focused. Don't get yourself in trouble. Because Miami, he probably will have some fun. <laughs> let's be honest. He's a young mm-hmm. kid, you know, and he's got a lot of energy. But let's be real. We talked about it before the season. We know that 
some of Miles's cons was that he wasn't really consistent running up the middle, and yeah. he wasn't the pass catching running back, which is what they need. Um, and he played he played well in the contract year, so hey, here it is. He did, it did, but it should. I like everything. It shouldn't take your contact year for you to be available more frequently than all the other years you you started. Well, this is also the year the healthy is the healthiest he's ever been. So to, this is true, but you know, once again, as we know, our running backs are kind of always treated like they're you know um, interchangeable, even though he had a shot to stay. I think, but I think that it really showed that in the Super Bowl that he wasn't as useful as he had been the whole season. <laughs> So to me, with Kenny Gainwell getting a, a lot more uh, carries than him during the Super Bowl, that was to me a sign that Kenny G would probably be back most likely um, to be the one or two for now because we know that most likely they may draft somebody. Um, and we also know that they brought in uh, Rashad, Rashad Penny. Perry. Rashad Penny, Penny. Yeah. So yeah, so Penny from the Seahawks. Now, mind you, he was just like Slay where we liked him in his heyday and kind of secretly wished that he had been on the team a while back, but I'm still cool with a guy coming in here being yeah. you know, a year on his contract or two, whatever. What is it? Is it a three year? No, it's a one year deal. It is a one year deal. I think, yeah. I think it's a one year deal. Yeah. He's getting like 600,000 up front. So, um, Hey, uh, you can't be mad at it. No, I mean, I I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at anything that involves a player that at one point, I think most of us fans were looking at him when, every year when it came down to looking at who they could put on the team. And he honestly, good on, somebody that knows he was good how to on the Seahawks. He was great he was on the Seahawks. On, and, you know, now he has a better offensive line. Oh, my God. He'll be uh, – should be good. It should be very good. And either way, even if Kelsey didn't come back, I felt confident with um, our Jurgens guy, you know. Well, now they're going to line up uh, Cam right next to him. Yeah, most right likely Kelsey. Kind of the right, right guard or right tackle or whatever. Yeah, right guard. Then he'll then he'll slide over because we we'll lost because who left? Uh... Hargrave. Oh no, not Hargrave. Hargrave no, did leave. Uh, That's what we're talking about? Um, Sam Alo. Uh, Sam Alo. Yeah. Sam Alo is gone, and uh, Hargrave was the first. I like I like Sam Alo though. <laughs> I did too, but I also know everybody kept saying from the middle of the season that most likely he will get a huge contract and he most likely won't stay because they can't pay everybody. That was that was he was the yeah. first out of many uh, people that were saying analysts, co commentators, whatever that kid's going to get a huge contract somewhere else and won't be with the Eagles. I wonder how much I didn't see the contract for. Uh, you see the contract for Dillard? How much he? How much did he make? Oh, uh, cupcake. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> Andre Dillard went to the <laughs> Titans. I don't think it was it was like nine mil or something. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't that it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, honestly, I was even shocked that I I, I felt like he should have even went the year before because the way that things weren't kind of working out. But he was starting to actually shake himself loose and I didn't know what that was gonna mean. Yeah. Before. You know, it's good for Andre Dillard, uh Kaiser White, you know. Um, he moved on as well. Um, all we know now is that Nicobe D most likely will be the starter now that TJ is gone. Well, TJ the Bears, um, apparently. Yeah. Started, so that makes sense. I don't, I don't like that one, but uh, I wanted TJ to stay. He's one of my favorite linebackers. Yeah. I was still kind of like whatever, but he he played himself enough that he if he can, if he had the opportunity to go to his hometown, then that's a good look for him, no matter what. Um, yeah, Javon yeah. Hargrave obviously went to the 49ers four year, eighty four million deal, dollar deal. You would go there go there too <laughs> with that money i mean i mean he's 30 he's 30 some years old and he's making 20 million a year now so hey he looks young too he does, i wouldn't even I'm, think I'm okay with that i'm okay with that and um uh rashad penny uh let me see i was trying to see if i got the post i think his deal was only what like six something mm -hmm. yeah so bradbury bradbury was the biggest shocker for me because i didn't think he was going to come back but he three year 38 million it's well, so, a good deal for him, yeah. Deal for him, obviously being a safety, being someone that obviously. Now we can, if we can, if we can lock up CJ, then yeah, I, think I, have, that, yeah, I, I think that secondary will be nice because Maddox is still on the con. Maddox yeah. is still on the contract. Yes. So. Yeah, Magic and Dallas. I mean, uh, Maddox and Dallas got restructured the same year. So. I mean, like yeah, we lost Epps, but I, but I think uh, that kid, yeah. uh, what's his name, Blankenship, is going to be fine. Yeah, Reed is definitely reliable. I'm not All right. We got our we got our, our we got our crazy little white boy running around hitting people. Yes, so. and he has a lot, he has a lot to prove because he kind of came out of nowhere, literally mid season when CJ went down. So I definitely felt like that was a good sign. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like the latest thing is here uh, on Twitter. 
Jeremy Fowler uh, tweets source, the Carolina Panthers plan to sign running back Miles Sanders. So he's oh, the Panthers, not, not the Dolphins? Okay. He's going to go there with uh, who's the new coach that used to be under us? Um, damn, that used to be uh, his name. That was um, Steichen. Steichen. No, Reich. Steichen. Oh, Reich. Oh, Reich. Frank Reich. Yeah, yeah Frank Reich okay. is the coach now in uh, Carolina, and apparently Deuce is the OC uh, coach over there. So that's good for That him. makes sense. That makes sense. And yeah. Good, it's a good look for both of them. So that's good. He's got and, probably, good and, it, and he's probably going to get a nice old payday for that, too. So. I thought he was going to go to Miami, but that's that's good for him either way. Um, and not too far. So we most likely, most likely will see him again because um, they usually always play the Panthers at some point. Um, and I'm distracted because I know that stuff is developing as we know with free agents when he shouldn't have been playing, you know? So, yeah, you know, but the thing is that they had, they didn't make, I mean, he could have said, he could he also said, no, I don't want. Yeah. I know, but you know that kids his age, especially because this is only his second or third year, he's going to feel Yeah, right. they want to play. Right. He wants, he wants to prove that he can last, but there is that, Thank you got to save him from himself thing, you know? Hey, you think we try to get Mariota on that cheap, on a cheap deal? <laughs> First of all, I was kind of bummed that Brissett is going to uh, the the Commanders because I was kind of hoping Jacoby. Brissett would have back up. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you want to talk yeah. about backups, like if Mariota came, how crazy would that be after years of everybody pining over him for one year and then him pining out to be a bust, and then he come back, mm. come back here as the backup? I mean, I would actually like him even better than Gardner, honestly. At this point, because Garner. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, Garner, you don't have to, with him. You don't have to change the offense that much because he's he's no. that style of uh, quarterback. So, and he can move. Like I think with Mariota, he's willing to move even if he's fumbled like crazy. But that's what's going to make him a backup. Um, I think at this point, there's nothing really popping other than just the booby news. Uh, Miles Sanders going to Carolina, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> I'm very happy also that. Um, what else do we have going on here? As far as the Eagles, I think they they played it well. Like I said, this, the week is still young. It's only it's only Wednesday, so there could still be some more moves. We're still waiting to see mm -hmm. if they decide to get some veteran linebackers. Like I said, Bobby Wagner's out there. Um, who, what position is Orlando Brown? Because I know he's talking on NFL Network right now. But I know Orlando Brown um, is one of the free agents that's out there. And I, I think at this point that we got to look at anything that obviously Howie's probably going to say, you'd be lucky to just come on this team for a year because this is where he gets all his money. <laughs> <laughs> he said you're lucky. Oh, yeah, you're lucky. Oh, you're... 2018, you don't care? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping. I think Orlando Brown is a tackle, offensive tackle, I think. Okay. Because that's why I was saying this kind of – What? Oh, okay. So the most recent thing that um, <laughs> CJ Gardner just tweeted a bunch of dots. So I don't know. Oh, he did. Mean. That means waiting, waiting, Wait. waiting. Or <laughs> it it because they couldn't get nothing done. Um, we don't know. Here's the thing with mm. Twitter that I've learned, and that even the when they had to do their talking points this week, because you know media was struggling this week trying to bullshit when they didn't know exactly if Aaron was staying. And this is always funny to me. Any fan is thinks this is hilarious because this is why all the bloggers start getting a little shine because they start acting like they got the scoop first. They don't know shit. But here's mm -hmm. the thing: when you have to read just emojis, AJ Brown decided if I'm going to tweet about anything and not get in trouble, he decided to discuss fruit for two days straight. <laughs> His tactic was that is funny as hell. Oh, I'm sorry. He wanted the fans to stop talking about stuff they didn't know, so he just started. Arguing yeah. About fruit and then it just started bouncing off people he argued that watermelon isn't good he, he talked about mangoes and then after that's a while funny. like I that's actually it. pretty that's actually pretty funny though because you look at it this way if you know these guys are going to look at social media especially <clears throat> slay because he just kept being on it and just kind of contradicting the reports that he saw just like uh, lamar just shut down um uh what's his name shefty for reporting what he was offered when he said it wasn't he goes that isn't what i was offered and it was like people just throwing shit up on the wall see if it sticks and i was just like i mean yeah i mean that is that what time it is. Year. is that, that time, time of year when that happens yeah what are your thoughts on lamar not having an agent because i thought it was pretty pretty strategic and <sighs> i'm looking at it like um you're cutting the middle man from taking more money out of your check than you want yeah he is but at the same time you gotta have somebody who knows the knows what they're doing too 
I know. Like, it's not. It's, but the thing it's is, it's not. Is the thing is, it's not working out for him though. I mean, look, he's still not. Uh, yeah, uh, that's why I said some people say, you know, what Colleen Wolf was saying on around the NFL is that he lost his leverage already, and you know, I agree with what even um, Dan said was that he should have held out this past season because then that way by now it would have been probably a done deal you know because they would have just I just don't I just, I just don't understand what the Ravens are thinking like just I don't either what like they should have uh, they should have signed him they they should have had him locked up two years ago a year ago I agree to me even before he got injured this past season that should have been a reason why they should have kept him so he didn't get injured yeah. again even even you though know? he's starting to get a little injury from him, but but again, why? Because one, his O-line is always fucked up early in the season. He doesn't have a running back that stayed healthy. You know, so sometimes he and when he did stay in the pocket, it did work. So it wasn't like he showed he couldn't be a pocket QB. It's just that mm. there were there were situations where the, the line was not reading shit right and he had to run. I thought he actually reduced his running before he got hurt this year. So in a way you have to look at it from the fact that he was willing to even play that game. Cause at first he was probably gonna be like, fuck y'all. Y'all know why I run. I don't yeah. run all the time. Like you mm-hmm. see what I'm working with here. Like every time he has a good O line, they get hurt like within a week, two or three and they all go down like dominoes. And then he's left <laughs> running for his yeah. life. So part yeah. of that is not his fault. Second of all, yes, he is injury prone, but he's also a running QB just like Jalen stuff will happen or he will get hurt because again if he has to use his his legs to get out of a situation because his o-line can't hold oh he's got he's he's got to stop taking those hits though to take oh, i agree hits. i agree and and hurts too like hurts learned as well so to me hurts yeah, hurts hurts doesn't take a lot of hits so he gets down more he doesn't than most, hit, than most guys so. that hit in the Chicago well, especially especially for a young guy i mean he gets down quick he doesn't like he's not standing up and just taking it <laughs> I think the reason why Jam- uh, Lamar takes it sometimes too is like he misread a read at that last minute, you know. And I think with mm-hmm. Hurts, it's more like somebody he got snuck because the only reason why he got hurt that that bad in the Chicago game was because of the mm-hmm. angle that they tackled him. It wasn't because he and the guy the guy ran him ran him down from behind. Ran him yeah. down. So yeah. and, and that was the only game that obviously started to become the reason why people started questioning him by the end of that season because. He wouldn't have came back week 18 if, if Gardner had done his job, you know? So yeah. he would have been chilling either way, injury or not. I think with Lamar, he's had no choice but to be the whole fucking team because people on the outside of him can't stay healthy. So, yeah. which, you know, like he had, he, and then when homeboy, uh, who was that guy? J, JK Dobbs, J, whatever Dobbs finally started coming back and running. He had, he, he still didn't have an O line to protect him. So even when he was getting free, it's like you don't have mm-hmm. the same quarterback. You have, um, well, that Huntley they had backup, you know, it's not the same. Huntley, yeah, Huntley, right? Yeah. Yeah, Huntley. So, and I like Tyler. I think he's, I think he's serviceable. I think he kind of, well, yeah, he's never going to be Lamar, but he's, he's like a poor version of, he's a poor version of Lamar. He's a great value. He's, poor, he's, he's a poor, he's a poor man version of Lamar. Yes, he is. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that necessarily, but I still do want a serviceable backup that is not Gardner Minshew uh, before, at least before. Yeah, season. I would like to, too. And with Matt Ryan just being shaken loose and Carson Wentz still sitting out there waiting, I'm just thinking to myself, you can't tell me all these bad backup quarterbacks that someone can't <laughs> use their way into the Eagles' fold. Um, hey, here, Matty, he's here. Here's, here's a million dollars, Matty. Come on, just come sit and hold the clipboard for us. Come on, you know, like I don't know what he may have the worst vision in the world, but at least he'd be protected because the O line and the Colts didn't help him either. It didn't help Carson either. So I think at least yeah. if he came here, you know, he has a good enough arm still. He, he, he won't die, yeah. He won't die. He won't be looking like a deer in headlights, you know. So I'll be fine with Matty yeah. Ice coming here. Um I'm trying to think of who He's, else is a decent backup. I mean he could he could teach, he could He'd be a good veteran. I mean, no, I just want a veteran. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want them to draft somebody. I would no. rather have a seasoned guy. I agree too. I mean, most likely, even if if we do get some random QB <laughs> that's in like the fourth or fifth round by accident, if if for whatever reason we get a pick there, yeah, that's fine and good. But you know that they have Ian Book, so they're not gonna. There's no reason for them to really look for. Well, it. Yeah project yeah. um but yeah. i do feel more secure if it's somebody who's seasoned like i would i would have preferred brissette i mean me personally we were having such a blackity black run i wanted a black backup <laughs> you know for her so we could just keep the blackity black going um because now that he's gonna have um his uh qb coach as his oc 
I just feel like you would want to keep that kind of vibe of a quarterback that kind of plays almost to like. Well, you need you need to yeah you gotta have somebody who plays his, like him. Yeah, that plays so. kind of like Hurts' Hurts' feel. I was actually kind of yeah, hoping yeah. for Baker, but now Baker's going to Tampa, so I'm kind of pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, would Baker be willing to be a backup? He better. His small bug. He should be to have a contract with anybody at this point in his career. Now my dad's pissed. Oh yeah. I sent I sent a text to him and I put it on my stories and I said, I said, how you like your new QB dad? He said, Hell no. <laughs> That's all he said back to them. He was like, Hell no. I said I was no. I was making fun of uh I was I was with my buddy James. I was like, James. How's it feel? We got Jimmy G. He's like, he's like, uh, well, you know what? Jimmy G, I'm like, uh, I wouldn't get that excited about having him either. So I mean, it's kind of lukewarm. It's like, yeah. it, could, it couldn't suck. It couldn't be horrible. Or, or it could suck really bad. It could <laughs> suck really bad. But see, here's the yeah. thing with Jimmy G. He has moments where he is totally focused and he's, he plays like, like as good looking as he is. But then there are some days you'd be like, I don't know what the freak you were looking at. Like, I, yeah, like what are you seeing out there? Where, who, who was over there? You know. So sometimes he can get unfocused, and he obviously gets injured a lot. Like he'll have an ankle here, or elbow. Like it's mostly that's 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 one of the reasons I didn't get like them uh, spending money on a uh, like that on Hargrave because yeah, because technically at this point, wasn't he just got his surgery? Who's going to be the starting quarterback? Yeah. Yeah, I agree, and that's the thing. Used to end. Uh, uh, Brock Purdy just got just got his surgery. So I was going to say, and between Trey, when, when is he going to be? When is he going to be ready? Day. Yeah, Trey still recovering. Trey Lance, and yeah. you know, Trey yeah. honestly would even be a decent backup here if he would be willing to be a backup already because he lost his opportunity, obviously, to start. But if you're going to have another backup, why well, he can come here too if he wants to be a backup? But he also had a very short stint as a starter, so he probably still secretly wants to prove that he could be a starter. So oh, yeah. I don't know coming here too. But I mean, I feel like there's so many possibilities for backups for Jalen. But I, I, I'm with you. Like you have to kind of have that kind of savvy because I don't think Jalen wants the same. You want that same skill set. You need the same, same skill set. set. Yeah. yeah, you want to at least play a little smooth like he does. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything going on here. Uh. Panthers agreed to sign to terms with Deshaun Williams. Looks like he's a defensive person. He's from the Broncos. Um, yeah, the Broncos look like they might be a little bit more interesting this season, too. Now, mind you, <laughs> Sean Payton over there with Russ could require lots of patience because one of them is probably going to blow their top midseason, I guarantee you, and I'm waiting for it. So, <laughs> Peyton, so they were talking, did you see Good Morning Football today? No, I haven't seen them in a while. Tell me what happened. Well, they they well they were talking about how uh, they're surprised how has Washington has done nothing. Yeah. No. Other than release Carson, that's the most lead and and sign Brissett and it's one other person. Yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. they haven't. What really happened? They 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 need to do more because they're not doing enough to change their team. I, I mean, wonder if the, need to find out if their owner can just fucking take a hike and maybe they're waiting for that money. Oh, God, I mean, please. I can't stand that motherfucker. That dude is Sorry. just a great <laughs> clown. No, he, he's a great clown over the whole organization. Like, I think oh, part of the reason uh, why this GM guy can't shine is because of him. Well, Dan, Dan Snyder is a horrible human being. So mm -hmm, He is. And I'm saying, I don't know. I don't care how much history they people keep pulling out of their ass. Washington has not been relevant since they changed their name. You know? And, and I, had, uh, I, had, I had somebody... Uh, I was talking to when I worked, and one of the, one of the sales reps was telling me like his uh, was his in law was mm -hmm. a kicker for him for uh, wow. for for, for the for rest of and he's like yeah, and he was saying how how, how horrible that Dan Snyder was like he was just he was like you, he said he did not like he did not like playing for him at all. I like, believe it was just. I mean, he's talking about how ra he's talking about how racist he is and all the other stuff. And he was like, "No, it's true." He's like, "He's," a and the guy was telling me the story. This Asian guy, he was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Man," he's like, "Yeah." Dan Snyder is one of the most racist guys uh, owners in the league. I'm like, "Wow." And that's what I'm saying. Like, some of these guys get away with it because they say it to the certain people, and then maybe not everybody gets that treatment. So that's why you still got you still got Doug Williams. Um, I just saw something on Doug Williams recently. Maybe it was a rerun of a documentary for him, but he was still talking about, you know, 
Dan Snyder, like he was a good guy or whatever, or just giving him praise or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, if you hadn't been the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl, I don't think you'd be. <laughs> in that yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna, so, I, I ain't gonna say it, but you know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, so it's like <laughs> we all know what that really is about. But I mean, history to me does not blur out the fact that you're a horrible person because that stuff starts to unravel more and more. I mean, mm-hmm. really re- I mean and how much can you? How much can you really hide? Then? You, like, if you're, uh-huh. if you're on a trial, you got cheerleaders talking. You got all these people just giving little tidbits as the years go on. How do you honestly look at a man like that and and have him be the face of your franchise? Like, there's just got to be a point where you just got to just let it go. You know, like yeah, just let him, let him, let him sell it. Let him sell let it or him something. Sell, it. Like, sell the team, like just like these flyer, these uh, flyer fi- hockey fans are out there with their bags on saying, "Sell the team." We need to well, the I don't want them to sell the team. I'm just glad they got rid of their GM. Oh, you, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a brother. He, he should have he, he been gone two years ago. The Flyers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they they're late on the Fletcher thing. But again, how many times did Mike Missinelli like scream bloody murder about how the Flyers are stuck in that old mentality, how they run their organization? And or a little. Was, uh, go ahead. Got Danny. Danny Briere is uh, taking over. So. What did you hear about the recent thing with his kid? Oh no! About Danny. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, his his kid apparently there's some video going around where his kid like pushed a, a wheelchair or something. I don't know if the person was in it. I just know that they're saying that he allegedly pushed some person in a wheelchair, and you know he he just put out released an apology with him and his son separately apologizing. I'm just like, not a good I'm start. Sure. He beat his ass afterwards too. I'm sure he was like, you ain't getting no free shit for at least a while. You like, ain't getting no. You on punishment forever. <laughs> right. You ain't coming to no games. I ain't bringing you nothing. You know. Yeah. So again, another entitled brat. Um, but all in all, like I said, this is gonna keep going. Right now, I don't see anything flurrying, but I'm sure as soon as we wrap, nah. but we'll keep posted. But I'm I'm happy about Fletch coming back just because I didn't care either way. Um, a lot of the guys that left, honestly, I did not really have any emotional ties to. Even Miles, because I already had decided in my head that I don't think he was going to stay. Yeah, I knew I knew he I knew he's going to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't feel like he had really gone above and beyond since his first two years playing here. Um, and him being injured oh. as he was, even if he played great this past season. When it comes right down to it, was he serviceable when they really, really needed him in the Super Bowl? No, he wasn't. And that could have been a lot of factors, but the fact that Kenny Gainwell was getting free as much as he was during the Super Bowl when, when honestly, the offense wasn't the problem, that it was the defense. Because we shouldn't be shocked with any of these defensive moves because we know the defense needs a major upheaval. To me, that's all I focused on. There's a reason why we lost that game, and it wasn't because of the offense. Because Jalen tried to make up for his mistake. So I don't know what the defense's excuse was besides Gannon being gone. Because obviously that was the key factor. But there were there were things that I don't think Slay even did on his behalf that really helped that team either. So to me, that's something that people don't want to admit to. Like, I would never want to trash Slay publicly because I like Slay. I thought he was serviceable. Yeah, I like Slay too, but... but his play did he, fall he, off at the end of the, toward the end of the season. I'm sorry. It did. He was out of position a lot. A lot. And to me, you being a captain, I'm glad he got his experience to be a captain and stuff. Like, I don't have venom against the man. I'm just more like, when it comes down to those big games, when it really mattered, it's like you were nowhere to be seen. So, and that's why I appreciate CJ, because CJ, even if the defense was becoming questionable in the second half of the Super Bowl, you go back and watch the Super Bowl, that's one of the plays you remember the most, is him putting hurting on Pacheco out of nowhere. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and Pacheco was becoming a factor in that second half. And the fact that that was one of the impressions he made to me showed that at that point, CJ was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm trying to hit somebody. So he did. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> yep. you know I mean? even did. if it didn't do much damage to Pacheco, it stopped him for a minute. Like he needed a he needed a minute to get himself up. Mm-hmm. So to me, that was just frustration, I think, on CJ's part because somebody wasn't doing something. And there could have been a lot of reasons why. We don't know. And they'll probably never really cop up to it. But I don't think Slay at that point had really been effective to get that defense where they needed to be. And I just think sometimes you got to overcome your overcome your coach in a scheme with that clearly isn't working. Once you had that first that first open TD, that should have clued y'all in. Like if they do that shit again, get to that side no matter how you how you got to get there. Yeah. So yeah, so there was a lot of it was it was it was bad. Uh, was like bad we said before, it, it, it yeah. was bad. Like they didn't they didn't they didn't. They didn't react to what was going on, mm-hmm. and it was poor, poor execution after that. So that's just that's just what happened. 
And that's the thing, like to me, for it to happen twice was a big exposure. And that's why it pisses me off because I'm thinking there's no way you could fall for it on the other side too. Like at some point you had to click, like they may try this shit again. So be over there. And for that to not yeah. happen, that's part of Slay's job. He is the captain. So that's why I say I'm not shocked that he didn't get, and he may come back. So I could talk all this shit and he could come back. It's fine. But my, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, you have to remember that is the only reason why they lost that damn Super Bowl because they were in it. They were in it. Oh, yeah. So, if they had covered better towards the end of the last few series of that game, oh, yeah. We'd and have, that should have never been an option. We'd, we'd, have, we'd, have, we'd have having a different conversation. Because we'd be having a different conversation because we know that there that were things and they just walked into the end zone. I'm like, what the hell? Like, and if you do it twice on both ends, that's something that's something ment- mentally and schematically that you are not understanding. And I don't understand why they had that many options, personally. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want to open up those wounds again. So talk no, about I know. <laughs> I know. Look. <laughs> But, but that's I, I just bring it back yeah. to why we're, we're seeing a lot of guys go. Yeah. Like, that's why none yeah. of these people are left are shocking me because we all know that some of those guys were going to require a hefty price tag for for not doing what they needed to do at that time. And there yeah. and Hargrave to me, I'm I'm not blaming him because we all know that he's been very productive. But I just knew that if you're asking for a big hefty payday, you are not going to stay here, especially if you're at, after a certain years being in the league. So. And that's the same. That's all I felt with, with Slay. As soon as he said oh, he didn't want contract restructure, I said, well, you're not going to yeah. say it. And if he was young, I mean, if, if Hargrave was younger, they would consider it. Yeah. Right. Because right. you can keep him longer. Because who knows what's going to happen to him next year? Who knows the level he's going like to be year, year after that? That's what I'm saying. We don't, we don't know what could happen. Every year changes. But at first, I used to tell you I hated how, you know, how he had the copy and paste mentality with some of these contracts. That's why I didn't like him for years on end. But I started to realize why it matters. Some positions to me are worth spending the money over others. And sometimes mm-hmm. you just can't you can't split that check to make everybody happy. It's just not gonna work. Yeah. So, I think he, I think how he's gonna figure it out. And I think he is so far. For the first time I actually fine. believe the same. I don't I'm hate hoping, him. Uh, Go ahead. I, I'm hoping to see him figure out the whole CJ thing. You know. Hopefully yeah. we can if we can lock, if we can lock CJ, man, we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Well, CJ to me, it'll show us CJ really wants to stay here because if he doesn't get the number he wants, is he willing to eat it? Just like Slay was was willing to leave. To me, that'll show if CJ really wants to be here. <clears throat> I don't think he's ever really personally said he wants to be in Philly. I think I just think he's like Philly's cool, but I think at the end of the day, we all know that he wants to get paid too. So, and he came like mid season. It wasn't even like we started with yeah. him. Like mid-season so he hasn't really even gotten the full philly experience other than someone stealing his fucking car yeah, <laughs> so i don't know if that idea. was a great impression on him so that's why i say like if he ain't getting his number he may be like deuces you know like i don't need to stay here I yeah. money, you know and so that's why i said it, it just to end this is just saying that in free agency frenzy you have to also realize that you can't have emotions with these players because at the end of the day they got family they got things they got to pay for you know they mm-hmm. everybody's kind of a rental after a certain year, especially after a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Year, you know. And also it's a it's a chess game because you gotta move around you gotta move pieces around the with money. And that's what yeah, and we're waiting so. for J- Jalen Hurst to get paid. So we know Jalen's yeah, getting he's paid. Got a, he's got a huge yeah. payday coming. So you have to consider that too. People keep forgetting, like Jalen still needs to get paid. So even though they probably work that money already, it's just the fact that someone had made a good point too, I heard before I close is that they were saying, I thought that maybe they would work Jalen first and then work their way down, you know, with whatever mm-hmm. money remained. But I'm just like, we also don't know if that's money already in escrow that they were going to, you know what I mean, agree on before even, you know, the final yeah. played. So we don't mm-hmm. know if that money is already secured. But we don't yeah. know anything is what I'm saying. So when even when I'm watching Twitter, it's like people always talk like they knew and, oh, I thought that was going to happen or I'm so upset. And I'll just be like, but in the end... It might work out. You know, you just never know. I just don't feel like yeah. they're the type of team now that makes me worry about whether or not they can go back to the Super Bowl just because these players are gone. I don't think that's even remotely in my mind. I mean, if you look at the key players they vote back, their offense has not changed. Not really. It's more the not defense. Not really. No, it's the more defense. the defense. That's always going to be a problem. And, 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 they, and, they have, and they have some players waiting in the wing that can step up. They get Nicole Dean's going to have to step up. You got that kid Josh Job. You got you got Davis. They're gonna have to all step up now. Oh my God, I forgot about Josh Job. I was like, who's that? Yeah, uh, he's a cute. Yeah, he's a, he's a yeah. cornerback. Yeah, 
Right. So that's what I'm saying. You know, so. and, and we know that this is that's the area to me that we should focus on the most. If we're going to worry about any section is that part, because that has never been completely solved even before Slay came. Mm-hmm. Like they said, yeah. it's been a long time since they even drafted somebody from Lidl Shepherd. What was that? Two thousand. Oh, yeah. Then. So that's how long. Oh, it's yeah. Been. It's been a while. So that's why I say like that's the only thing that we should be stressing about is just who is going to cover the guys so they don't just walk into the end zone anymore because that's what we want to prevent because that's what ended the whole season. So just stay focused with that, y'all. Worry about those positions. Everything else is going to work out. I'm more stressed about these motherfuckers keep walking in the end zone over us. (laughs) Let's just stop that shit (laughs) right now. Yeah. So anyway, but birds of a feather, this is our new season. Uh, More stuff will be popping as sure as the week goes on. Um, I'm so ready for this week to be over because work has been kicking my ass. <laughs> uh, I'm like, down these next two days, I'm like, I want to be off. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I can tell audience when Eddie starts doing that twitch. He's tired or hungry, and he wants to get off. So <laughs> <laughs> when you start doing this, I'll be like, oh, I can't. Eddie's like, I can't. I can't. Help uh, I'm I, I, I stay awake. I'm hungry. I don't want to be mean. <laughs> well, I've been. I haven't left this desk in like. Since eight o'clock, nine o'clock this morning. So no, I hear you. That's why, like, I didn't get a chance to get a walk in today because I had groceries delivered, and then by the time like six o'clock rolled around, I was like, I got to get away from my desk. And then I was like, Oh shit, what mm. time? I forgot. <laughs> but but thank you though. Either way, as usual, hanging out with us. This is one of these episodes. Oh, yeah. that, like it could go either way. By the end of the week, don't see my mug again. Before the end of the week, if something else develops. Um, I'm going to go and watch our Sixers hopefully beat these Cavs because I got money on it. I got five right. on, I'm on it. it. <laughs> All right. Eddie, get some sleep. Thank you for staying up for me, homie. And uh, we'll talk to y'all on the next one. Go yep. birds. Get them deals done. And uh, y'all uh-huh. have a great night. Thanks for peeping. Later. Later. <laughs>